welcome uh, welcome you all for this class <clears throat> during previous classes series of lectures uh, we have completed uh, topics along with notes and uh, detailed discussion was made of the all types of the uh, topics uh, all topics were covered now we are moving towards some of the important exercises and these exercises will help you out to solve numericals to solve the topics related problems like today uh, topic is kinematics and during kinematics we will see some of the short questions mcqs and then after discussing mcqs we will solve some of the numericals or the problems and these problems will make your concept strong to understand these topics so kinematics Additional multiple choice questions and MCQs. Now, what are the additional MCQs? These these are the answer. Some of the important MCQs which are in uh, linked to the kinematics and the answers are also given. You must understand these. To insert the correct options A, B, C, D in an empty box opposite to each other by dividing displacement of a body, moving body with time, we obtain what we obtain average velocity. Average speed, average acceleration, and then by dividing the space in the moving body with time, we obtain displacement divided by time. So you have to find out the answer. Some of the answers are deliberately given wrong so that you find the correct answer. Displacement of moving moving by rate of change of displacement divided by time. That is basically velocity. It's not average velocity. None of these. So, so that's why average velocity is the total displacement. This is only displacement given. The ball is thrown vertically upward. Its velocity at the highest point is. Whenever you throw body any one any body in upper direction, its velocity at the maximum height becomes zero. So. Here it is. B, the correct answer. A change in position is specified by a length and a direction is called. A length as well as direction. This is called displacement. And the C is the correct answer. A train is uh, traveling at uh, 36 km per hour. Its velocity expressed in meters per second is. Uh, a train is moving 36 km per hour. This velocity expressed in meter. What you have to do to convert into meter per second? You have multiply 36 with 1000, that is uh, kilometer, uh, converted into meter and divided by time, that is 60 meter per 60, 3600. And finally, you will be getting 10. A car starts, at, uh, you will be getting the 10 correct answer. A, task, a car starts from rest, X requires a velocity of 20 meter per second. After 5 sec seconds, with an acceleration, it moves with an acceleration of what will be the acceleration? It means start from rest to vi is zero and it acquires the velocity vf that is 25 and the time is 5 means 25 minus 5 divided by t that is 5, 25 minus 0 divided by 5 that is 5. So its correct answer is 5. You have to do some calculations for this lecture, it's almost for one and a half. One hour, so you have to understand some of the most important topics, some of the most important exercise questions which are linked to the kinematics to understand the topic. That is, if a body move, if a body does not change its position with respect to some observer, then it is set to be in the state of yes, it's rest. If a body continuously changes its position with respect to some observer, then it is set to be in the state of. Yes, it's state of motion because it's changing. We have discussed in the detail in our, our lectures and the classes. So the state of rest or motion of a body is always this one C relative. If we compare one of the body with the other body, one with the other, so that we say that if one is not changing its position with respect to the other, that's why we are basically finding the relative type of motion. We are using a relative concept. A motion in which every particle of a body has exactly the same position, motion is called, it's D, 
translates to motion. If the motion of a body is in a straight line, it is known as straight line, rotatory, no. Linear, yes. It's not vibratory. Vibratory motion, body repeats its motion in equal intervals of time. Translatory, no. Linear. If a body is moving in a circular path, then such a motion is called. If a body is moving in a circular path, then such a body is called. We have to find out the answer of this question. So here it is. If a body is moving in a circular path, such a motion is called circular motion. Circular path, circular motion. Motion of a gas molecules is an example of because they are moving irregular type of the motion. So that's why they are called random motion. Volume motion is also an example of random motion. To and fro motion of a body about the mean position is known as vibratory motion. So this is the correct answer. So when each point of a body moves around a fixed point axis, then the motion of this body is called rotatory. No, linear. No, it's vibratory type of the motion, or uh, it's uh, circular type of the motion. Which type of the motion it is? If each point of a body moves around a fixed point, so that is rotatory type of the motion. So highest distance between two points is called shortest distance between two points is called displacement and the distance between the two points or the space between the two points is called distance but here the correct answer is displacement if this is the shortest distance as displacement is a vector scalar a constant or variable it says vector quantity it's the best example for the vector quantity so unit of displacement is meter meter per second meter per second square or kilometer per second a displacement distance both are measured in meters distance covered per unit time this is distance not displacement not mixed with one with the other so this is the distance covered per unit time it's distance speed velocity or acceleration is speed displacement covered per unit time is basically velocity the rate of change of acceleration is basically velocity. Displacement covered per unit time is yes, it is it is velocity. Yeah, unit of speed is meter per second, meter per second is square or kilometer per second or meter per second. So it's B meter per second. Might be kilometer per hour, but it's second. So unit of velocity is meter per second is here, meter and meter per second or kilometer per second. Formula of velocity is rate of change of displacement. Unit of displacement is meter time is second, meter per second is the correct answer. Speed is a scalar, vector or uniform quantity, a variable quantity. Speed is a scalar quantity. It does not have any type of uh, direction to represent. Speed is a scalar quantity. So next is velocity is a scalar quantity, variable quantity, vector quantity, or it's a uniform quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity because it has some direction. Why? Because when we define, we define rate of change of displacement of a body. So displacement is a vector, so that's why it is a vector quantity. If a body covers equal distances in equal interval of time, however small the interval, interval may be, the speed is said to be constant speed. If a body covers equal dis distance in equal interval of time, however the small interval is maybe the speed of the body is said to be variable speed. Equal distance in e unequal interval of time. So that's why it is called variable velocity. So Let's use the highlighter to make it more comfortable to understand. Yes, it is. So this is basically, this one is, uh, whoever the small interval of the time is, this is variable y, because unequal intervals of time are. If the speed of a body remains the same, but its direction changes, then the speed is said to be variable speed.
so when the body are in motion then the velocity of the body relative to the other is called relative velocity so the rate of change of velocity of a body is known as heart speed not velocity but its acceleration because this is the definition of acceleration if the velocity of a body changes unequal unequally in equal interval of time its acceleration will be variable because it's changing in equal interval of if a body of a, if a velocity of a body changes unequally this is the main point to remember so gradient of distance time graph gives us speed distance of time distance per per unit time is basically speed from distance time graph we can find distance speed uh, velocity one of them two of them or uh, three of them distance time graph speed acceleration yes two of them so if you use the formula of distance time you need distance and time distance and time basically are used to calculate speed distance covered per unit time and if you know the distance you can also calculate the speed as well so these are the two uh, so distance time graph we, we take time along x axis variable quantity is taken on y axis the time that is dependent independent quantity is allowed this taken along y axis so the velocity time graph gradient will uh, give us value of so here it is velocity time graph value of acceleration if uh, three equations equations of motion acceleration will always be this was the condition we have applied for the derivation of uh, equations of motion uniform acceleration is required if three equations of motion velocity is always taken to be a long straight line so all the velocity acceleration etc are vector quantities but in in the three equations of motion we always consider consider their magnitudes only as a unit of acceleration is meters per second square this is the acceleration unit as a unit so here are the some others and uh, it is the si unit of velocity is uh, meter per second so this is the si unit of velocity if the velocity time graph is not a straight line then the acceleration will be variable in case of straight line the velocity acceleration will be straight line and if it's straight line then the, that is uniform if it is not straight line then it is variable if the gradient gradient of velocity time graph is negative then the acceleration will be decreasing deceleration so if the gradient of velocity time graph is positive then the acceleration will be increasing time is absent from s is to s is equal to uh, v i is v f is equal to v i plus v t s is equal to v i t plus half it is square And two s is equal to v f square minus v s square. It means third one, the time is absent. So the body is allowed to fall freely. It moves down with constant acceleration. So if a body is allowed to fall freely, it moves down with increasing velocity, and it becomes maximum from the point when it is drop by zero. and it it keep on increasing and just before hitting the ground the velocity of the body becomes maximum so velocity of the body increases when it moves down the gravitational acceleration is represented by g this value is 9.8 cm no 9.8 cm per second no acceleration has second square so here is uh, cm here it is meter no It's ninety-eight meter per second square. So this is approximately ten meter per second square. For a body throw uh, thrown uh, vertically upward, the value of gravitational acceleration will always be 
negative and i have already explained if you find the formula to calculate acceleration that is vf minus v i at the time from the ground when you are throwing it have maximum velocity when it reaches up to the final uh, point i s peak that is zero zero minus maximum it means my negative sign so that's the justification when you are calculating acceleration in upper direction it becomes negative find the value of g by free fall method the time to strike the ground uh, strike the ball with the wooden bar is very short so we is the option so here it is such type of motion in which uh, every particle of a body has exactly the same motion is called translating motion this one velocity of a uh, velocity of light in meter per second is c option that is 3 multiplied in this per 8 meter per second velocity of a car moving in a circle will be variable the direction is changing the velocity and acceleration of a body moving with uniform speed in a circular path will be uh, same direction, opposite direction, but mutually perpendicular. Circular path, you know, if, if we draw a circle, there it is. If this is the acceleration, direction of the acceleration, uh, sorry, velocity. If it is the velocity, then the direction of acceleration is perpendicular and it's directed in one. So this is the logic, both are mutually perpendicular. Uh, velocity of uh, or, and acceleration is always directed towards the center of the circle. Velocity of a train increases from 10 meter per second to 20 meter per second in one second. The average velocity will be, of course, you will add these two, 20 plus 10, 30, and you will divide with two. That will be V, V is the correct answer. So moving ahead, the velocity of a train increases from 10 meter per second to 20 meter per second in a minute. Its average velocity will be, so here it is. So add these two and divide with two. Uh, brick is dropped from the height of 80 meter, this one. Its velocity before touching the ground will be, this one formula to calculate time is uh, vf is equal to vi plus at and then you will put the values you will be getting this answer the distance and direction of a body from fixed point points shown uh, shows its displacement no distance and direction of a body from a fixed point that is position basically b so a speedometer of a car measure is speed on the no direction spinning of earth is an is a type of rotatory motion circular motion linear motion translatory motion or vibratory motion it's a basically rotatory type of a motion where the body is, uh, moves in a circular path about a fixed point. The velocity and displacement are vector quantities. Both are vector quantities. Average speed of leopard is it's the 90 kilometer. Unit of uniform acceleration in SI unit is all types of the acceleration are the same unit. But they are average, uniform, variable. So whatsoever it is, it is meter per second, SI unit. The rate of change of velocity is known as, of course, it's known as acceleration. If a body does not change its position with respect to some observer, and it is said to be in the state of rest, it's for the definition of rest. The velocity and acceleration of a body moving with uniform speed in a circular path Mutually perpendicular. Already we have discussed it. So, if a body is dropped from the top of a tar, the distance covered by it, in the first second is four 
first second sign given you are dropping it from the top of a star initial velocity is zero you will put the values in the equation of motion the answer will be five and you have to find out which equation you will use to find which of the following is not a vector quantity torque vector force vector velocity subsea vector so that's why power is a scalar quantity which of the following is a vector quantity energy mass time temperature velocity of course all other four are not vector quantities they are not having direction velocity is only quantity which have direction magnitude as well an object is moving at a steady speed in a horizontal circle which of the following describes the direction of the resultant force acting on it the same direction the same object is traveling traveling or uh, the opposite direction to the one the object is traveling towards the center of the circle or away from the center of the circle so the body is moving towards the center of the circle why an object is velocity is a vector since it has magnitude and direction sorry an object is moving at a steady speed in a horizontal circle which of the following describes the direction so this is the reason why the acceleration is always directed towards the center so you will find out where the direction is which of the following is list of the physical quantity consists of only one vector only a vector velocity time and force these are the only if you look at here velocity mass is not volume is not a vector here mass and time are non vector here you see volume and temperature are non vector so that's why these quantities are only quantities which have the vectors the diagram shows how the length of a spring changes when a load of 10 newton is hung at it uh, what will be the length of a spring d when 20 newton load is hung on it so weight is given displacement is given we are asked to calculate length we will calculate by using formula of length which diagram correctly shows the addition of 4 and 3 newton you, you will add these vectors with add up here Head to tail rule. So at the end, you will see this is the vector four, square sixteen and three nine twenty five. And square of twenty five is five newton. At the same time, the direction is also along the resultant. Look, this direction is here opposite. It's not possible. It's not considered. So here the vectors are not added by head and tail rule. So that's why the only vectors added by head and tail rule are using the conditions of addition of the vector this one is the only possibility so the diagram shows four forces acting on a block these two forces are acting on this if you sum up that are 11 and these two forces 3 and 2 that 5 newtons are acting here 11 newtons if you go right and left 5 newtons now what is the resultant of the force 0 6 newton to the right less c is 4 plus 7 Uh, 11 and 3 plus 5 to 5. 11 minus 5, 6. So this is the resultant force in case of C. You will subtract the both sides forces, and then you will be able to find out where will be the resultant. The resultant will be this one, and the body will move under the influence of this force because if you calculate the difference of forces, the difference of forces is this one. So uh, a noun force is applied to an object. on a horizontal frictionless surface what property of the object must be known in order to calculate the acceleration the mass we need to know about the mass a uh, newton second law motion you will apply the diagram shows 9 newton and 12 newton forces acting on a body 9 and 12 which of the following diagram shows the resultant force d square of 12 square of 9 and finally taking the square root uh this one you should look at this one 9 square plus 12 square and it will become 15 newton so that's why the 
uh, working force needed to stop a car. Force needed to harm a nail into wood. Which one is the stellar quantity? Let's see, that is heat needed to boil some water. Heat needed to boil some water is a stellar quantity. So here it is, which diagram correctly shows the addition of four Newton and three Newton forces. Again, it's A, because you add these two, take the square root, and then you will be at four square plus three square, square root, and it will be, your answer will be basically five Newton. So the total weight of a gas filled balloon in 1500 Newton, the balloon rises at a constant speed of three meter per second. What is the resultant force acting in the balloon where it is rising? So there will be zero force acting because it is, action is balanced by the reaction. So no force will be acting. So here it is, a vector contains more information than a scalar. But it's extra information, like third direction, there's some magnitude both have units, both quantities have units. So this is the only difference of direction. But I mean motion is an example of vibratory random, linear or translatory, it's a random type of motion, to and fro, irregular, zigzag. Which one of the following is scalar quantity? Velocity, volume, force, these force expression vector, velocity also vector. So this is the only volume which is basically scalar quantity. The spinning motion of a body about the axis is called spinning motion. This is not linear. No, and uh, circular, no, it's basically rotatory type of motion. It spins about the axis. To and fro motion of a body about its mean position is vibratory motion. A body which repeats its motion in equal interval of time. The unit of uh, acceleration is meter per second square. So, this is the unit of the acceleration. So negative acceleration is called retardation. So negative acceleration is also called deceleration and it is also called retardation. Both are the option. Both A and B, yes, both A and B. This one and this one both are called negative acceleration. These are called also called negative acceleration is also called retardation. The motion of a pendulum of a clock is vibratory motion. The flight of butterfly is called random motion. This is an example of random motion, which is not a scalar quantity. Speed is not a scalar quantity. Distance is also not a, which is not a scalar quantity. Uh, yes, this is displacement, you know, this is also scalar. This one is also scalar. This one is also scalar. The only remaining one is displacement. So displacement is scalar quantity. Which are the following is a vector quantity? Uh, here you look. Speed is uh, speed is scalar. Distance is scalar. Power is scalar. Only displacement is the remaining one, which is the vector quantity. Change in position is called. Change in position is called velocity. Rate of change of position in particular direction is called velocity, basically. And change in position is called distance, displacement, the speed. Final answer of this quantity. You, I have given you a few minutes to think about it and then find out the change in position is called. Basically, it's displacement or distance or velocity. Last thing. So here it is the acceleration of a car which starts from rest and attains velocity 20 meter per second in 8 second will be. So basically this is the form, this is linked with uh, equation of motion that is uh, Vf is equal to Vf plus At. So uh, velocities are given. Starts from rest, Vi is 0 and attains a velocity that is Vf that is 20 meter per second in 8 second time. So you will use 2s is equal to vf square minus vf square formula and you will get the acceleration because rest of all quantities are given. So when you will put the values in that equation of motion, you will be getting this answer. This is your factor to find out. Acceleration is equal to 
2s is equal to vf square minus vi square and this acceleration is also calculated change in velocity divided by time vf minus vi divided by time so that's why a is the correct answer the speed of a tiger is uh, we have already discussed that is 90 or 70 kilometers this is the speed of a tiger 70 to 90 so here a car is moving with the speed of 20 meter per second this is speed in kilometer per second you have to convert it in kilometer if these are kilometer you multiply with 1000 and divide with 3600 so if you will follow the procedure of reverting it back you will get in c option don't follow the technique to convert kilometer to r uh, to meter per second that is the different procedure multiplying with 1000 divided by 3600 that you will come you have now you are asked to convert from meter per second to kilometer per second you have to change complete the equation vf is equal to vi plus at so this is the c option this is the station motion so here it is complete the equation vf is equal to vi plus at so it's the c option is the correct answer vector quantity is this is not vector distance is not vector speed is not uh, power is not vector displacement is basically vector the distance covered in a unit time not velocity it is displacement not uniform velocity uh, not acceleration it is a change of velocity definition of acceleration is change of velocity rate of change of velocity so this is the only option that is a speed the distance covered per unit time so here uh, it is we we come across we, we are now uh, going to uh, to learn about the techniques to solve some problems uh, uh, which are related with the kinematics so a train moves with a uniform velocity of 30 km per hour for 10 seconds find the distance traveled by it so here it is this is basically distance velocity so first of all you will change velocity from kilometer per hour to meter per second so here it is 10 meter per second so then it's time time is 10 second put the here value draw the data basically it is given data and it is required required that this time is uh, distance how much for distance it, it will travel then you have to look into uh, the given data in the hours, the required one. Given data is 10 seconds. The distance is uh, hours. So uh, the formula which is used to calculate the distance and the velocity of the speed is V is equal to S divided by T. And here the value of S uh, to calculate that is V uh, velocity multiplied by the time. And the velocity is 10 and the time is 10. So you will multiply these two with each other and then you will be getting distance so it means there is a technique to calculate the distance if you are given velocity and if you are given the time then you, you will be able to calculate the velocity of any object by using this condition but first of all you have to see the basic conditions to apply to find out if the initial velocity body starts from west its initial velocity is always zero but if the sudden brakes are applied final velocity is zero but if a body is moving with kilometer per hour then you have to convert it into meters so that the all quantities given in the problems are in the same set of measurements so that it, it becomes easier for the calculation so here it is at train starts from rest clearly shows that the final initial velocity is zero that is vi is zero then it moves a, a distance of one kilometer you have to convert this kilometer into meter why because the time is given in second so all units you have to keep in one one system of measurement so that's why you are converting it into kilometer to meter so with uniform acceleration uniform acceleration means velocity is zero what will be its speed at end of 100 seconds you are asked to calculate the speed after 100 seconds first of all you have calculated you have converted the all types of the units so by putting the value that starts from rest and otherwise uniform acceleration vi is zero this whole factor becomes zero so half s is equal to vit plus half is a d square so you will put the values 
start from a less move uniform oscillation so that's why if you put the values you are getting the here it divide divide sin r plus and minus so if you put the values that is uh, 0.2 meter per second is square and if you uh, acceleration first of all if you look at you are asked to calculate the final speed what will be the speed initial speed is this one final speed at the end of 100 second so it means you are asked to calculate vf for vf you need this is the formula to calculate vf but in this formula there is no acceleration then we will use the given data to calculate acceleration and we will see if we can or not we can yes we have, we can we have, by using formula we have calculated acceleration and after calculating value of acceleration we will put the value and then we will be able to uh, find out the value of the final velocity so these are some of the techniques used first of all you you draw you write down the given data uh, you draw and then you, you divide the whole uh, phase into different uh, portions one is the given data other one is to uh, for, to find a uh, required and then you will write the uh, equation applying equation of motion and then you will do some calculation and then you will be able to find out the answer so if you are following this sequence it becomes more easier for you to solve such types of numerical sort of problems so here is another problem a car has a velocity of 10 meter per second it accelerates at 2 meter per second this is a uh, this is basically a velocity and this velocity is initial velocity and if you look at this one is acceleration for half an hour, half an hour means 30 seconds. Find travel this distance travel during this time and final velocity. Distance and final velocity as well. So what will you do? First of all, you will calculate the distance. How you will cal calculate the distance? Final velocity, VF and the distance traveled. Look at the given data. Here is V I V F A T. So you can calculate final velocity by using this formula. Vf is equal to Vi plus At. So after putting the values, you are getting final velocity that is 16 meter per second square. And after putting this value, you can also calculate the distance that is S is equal to Vit plus half it is square. And you can also use the third equation of motion 2As is equal to Vf square minus Vi square. And you will be getting the same answer if you follow at a, at a time. At the same time, if you use your own concept, it will be more easier and you will feel it easier. You have more than one or two options to solve such types of the problems. But the important thing is that it will be only possible if you have a clear idea about the definition of the basic concepts of these topics. So here it is. Tennis ball is hit vertically upward with a velocity of 30 meters per second. It takes three seconds to reach the highest point. Calculate the maximum height reached by the ball. How long it will take to return to ground? You have thrown in upward direction and it will reach up to the maximum. You have thrown with this velocity basically. This velocity is this velocity is initial velocity. This one. And when it will reach up to up to the maximum height, it will be having final velocity and the final velocity is always zero. The time is three seconds. The distance, uh, maximum height of the distance is S. Time, you are required to calculate the time. You know what type of the equation, equation you know the equation of motion that is S is equal to VIT plus uh, half it is square because all the values are given. So you will put the values to calculate the time. Distance, why you are calculating distance? Because you are required to calculate the distance. So after putting the values in the uh, formula, you calculate calculated the distance. When you have calculated distance, now you are asked to calculate time. And to calculate time is S is equal to VIP plus half it is square. So after putting value, the time is basically six seconds. So this is the correct procedure to solve some of the problems. Again, you, you can use more than two options to calculate to find the and time to reach up to this equation. You can also use first equation of motion that is 2as is equal to vf square minus a square. s is equal to vf is equal to vi plus at square. at. By using that equation, you can also calculate the time. So you have different options. It's, these are not difficult. These are easier equations to solve. But you have to see, first of all, draw 
I don't three equations and motions together. If you are unable to write, memorize in your mind, keep in your mind this type of equation when it will be used. When you are asked to calculate acceleration, but the time is not given. When you are asked to calculate uh, acceleration when the time and velocities are given. And when you will be asked only to calculate acceleration time uh, and final emission velocity, then you will calculate for situation motion. So you have to decide intelligently. So it, it lies on your shoulder. It, it becomes more easier with the factors with the factors of time when you do when you are attempting to solve such types of problems. So there is another problem that is a car moves with uniform velocity of 30 meters per second for five seconds. So here this velocity is basically initial velocity through which it is moving with time that is five seconds. It comes to rest. It means when it comes to rest, Vf is zero. Vf is zero in the next 10 seconds now with uniform acceleration. Find the acceleration total distance traveled by the car. You have to calculate acceleration and total distance traveled by the car. To calculate acceleration, depending on the value, if you see, this is the time uh, when, uh, during first five seconds, this is the distance traveled. And you have to calculate after 10, first, first five and after 10. So after 10, you will use later on, here in this equation, after 10. But before 10, this is the formula to calculate the distance and you have calculated distance during first five minutes, second. Then you, you will use the equation of motion to calculate acceleration by using this equation, this data, you are able to calculate acceleration. Why you are calculating acceleration? Because you are asked to calculate distance after a certain time. So this is the time, here is the distance. So you need acceleration to, to calculate, to use this equation. So you are using this equation. And for this, you have calculated time. You are given for, for that interval and also and the acceleration you have already calculated you will put the values and finally adding these two this is the time before uh, five seconds and this is after 10 seconds so you will add these two and finally you will be getting correct answer so our plan starts from rest as it is given from the numerical the problems first of all you have to take time to understand you have to take time to uh, to understand to how to solve what type of values are given, what is the condition, and when you will apply. And then start from rest with an acceleration of 0.5 meter per second square. So it starts from rest and attains an acceleration of this value. So find its speed in kilometer per hour. Speed is can be asked in kilometer per hour when it has moved through 100 meter. Distance is given. So first of all, you draw the de given, given data. Velocity is zero, final velocity is as acceleration is given and the distance is given. Which formula will suit to use to calculate the distance and final initial? So this is the formula. This one is the equation suitable to calculate final velocity. Why you are not using first equation? 2s, Vf is equal to Vi plus at because there is no distance. Now you have to use distance to calculate the final velocity. So the only option which you have the easy option, not only, but easy option which you have, that is 2s is equal to vf square minus v s square. And this equation tells you that these all other values are given. So the only value required is there. And you put the value and you will be able to calculate the final velocity. So you are using this technique to calculate the final velocity. When you are given velocity, values of the velocity, you are given distance and acceleration, then you can calculate easily the final velocity. Now, another problem that is, uh, if you look at the problem can be solved by plotting graph between velocity and time. By calculating area on the graph, we can calculate the total distance. So here it is, the distance you have calculated uh, by using this equation. Basically, area under the curve, this is the curve. And if you look at, this is the graph and this one is the curve. First, distance and time. Uniform motion, then it is constant, and then it it reduces and up to certain speed, it comes down and becomes at rest. So we have to use the total. You will use formula, mathematical formulas to calculate the distance, uh, the area under the graph. This one graph that will be able to calculate 
the required distance traveled by the object. So this is the distance time. You have drawn the values with the help of the graph. You will apply the triangle formula for this portion. Then you will apply the rectangle formula for this portion. And then again, you will apply the tri tri uh, triangle formula to calculate. So you, you see this is, these are the formulas to calculate by looking at the shape of the graph, by putting the values and what you have done, you were asked to calculate the approach distance traveled by using this formula. And separately, you will calculate the area of this shape, then area of this shape, then area of the, this shape, then at the end you will add up all these three, then you will be calculating the total distance covered by any object when it is moving from O to A, when it has moved from O to A, then A to B, and then B to E. So this is the question to calculate. And for this, you have to understand uh, what type of the formula is to calculate the area of a triangle, to calculate the area of a rectangle, or to calculate the area of a, a game triangle. So another problem that is a cricket ball is hit vertically upward and returns to the ground six seconds later. It means it goes up, come back to the ground in six seconds. Calculate maximum height reached by the ball. Initial velocity of the ball. Initial velocity of the ball as well as the maximum height. These are the two questions, two portions of this question. First of all, again, the following the same technique for the tools. First of all, you will calculate uh, initial velocity, uh, write down the da given data. It's initial velocity, this one is final velocity. Now you are asked to get given time and you are asked to calculate the distance maximum height that is distance so which formula you have to decide which formula you will use to calculate the, the max time taken to reach at the maximum height will be equal to the time return to the ground so the total time is six so it means that three seconds it will take to reach up to the maximum and the first portion you are asked to calculate the time taken to reach the maximum that will be three seconds there is no doubt but at the same time it will take to come back. So th this was the total time given, moving up to the maximum height and moving back to the ground. So divide this portion, it will take total three seconds, uh, six seconds. So six seconds is the total time of stay of, of the wall in the air. But how much time it will take to reach up to the maximum? Half of this, that is three. And how much it will take to come back? That will be three. So here we are using three seconds by using the technique to understand. So Vf is equal to Vi minus Gp. This was the formula to calculate the final velocity and you have calculated the final velocity. Now, uh, what about the distance moved? That will be 2gh, not s. You will replace it with h. That is equal to Vf square minus Vi square. So by this, you will calculate the total height at end uh, by applying the certain conditions, by applying the value of the velocity through which it hits above. So what you have done, basically you have calculated the value of the velocity, initial velocity is not given, final velocity becomes zero, we already know, you are asked to calculate initial velocity to which it is drawn, then you will use first equation of motion and by using this equation you will be able to calculate uh, initial velocity and you will be able to calculate the distance traveled of the movement of the character. So if you look at this problem, when brakes are applied, the speed of a train decreases from 96 kilometer, 96 kilometer per hour to 48 kilometer per hour. It means this was the initial velocity and this is the final velocity brakes are applied. So that's how velocity is decreasing. So here is the value in meter per second. Here is the value in meter per second. How you have calculated this value? Basically, you have uh, multiplied 96 with 1000 and you have divided it with 3600. So uh, final velocity, you have again multiplied 46 with 1000 and you have divided it with 3600, 3600. So the distance uh, given uh, the travel is eight, 800 meter. 
how much further it will train uh, will the train move before coming to rest assuming the retardation to be constant so retardation to be constant so this is the formula you are asked to calculate next distance and acceleration so here is the formula to be s is equal to v of square minus pi square and here is the formula to calculate the acceleration distance so you have calculated distance by using this formula and then you have applied to calculate the distance this formula of before calculating the acceleration and which when these values are given which formula or equation you will use to calculate the uh, acceleration vf vi has two s is equal to va vf is square minus vi is square so that's why you have used this equation to calculate acceleration whenever you are given initial and final velocities and you are asked to calculate uh, the acceleration distance traveled is also given then you will use third equation of motion to calculate distance and when you have calculated distance you will put the value and you will be getting acceleration value then we move ahead you are asked to calculate the distance traveled after this acceleration so this is the value to calculate so here it is s is equal to uh, 266.66 meters so this is the distance traveled by the object before coming to rest so in the work problem find the time taken by the train to stop after application for the brake what was the velocity velocity was this one final velocity will be zero because brakes are applied well so what is the acceleration we have already calculated time in the previous problem time you will calculate vf is equal to vi plus at so here is the formula to calculate time and time is calculated by this formula applying the same conditions you can calculate time by using first equation of motion by because when you are given velocities when you are given acceleration then you can calculate the time by using this equation of motion so here are some of the important definitions let's go for once more revision of these main topics kinematics is a study of motion of an object without discussing the causes of motion we are not discussing about the force we neglect force in dynamics we will study about the force define rest body is set to be in the state of rest it does not change its position with respect to its sounding so position of a table in a room this is example of a because table is not changing its position always you change to your position so define motion a body is set to be in the state of motion if it changes position with respect to sounding the body is changing its position with respect to sounding it is set to be in the state of motion given example of an object which is at rest and also in motion at the same time the passengers are in bus are at rest with respect to bus and at the same time passengers are in motion with respect to the people who are at the outside standing along the road you if you are sitting inside the bus you are basically in rest with respect to bus but if you look at the back, outside the people standing on the road the bus is moving you are in motion with respect to the people standing outside how many types of motions are these are the three types of motions rotatory motion rotatory motion and vibratory motion so what is brownian motion basically this is a zigzag motion of a particle is called brownian motion which is not regular which is irregular type of motion random motion of a small particle is brownian motion uh, define a linear motion with example straight line motion of a body is called linear motion motion of a car in road straight road differentiate between distance and displacement distance is actual length of, of the path between two points it's a scalar quantity it is measured in meters centimeters kilometers without any direction displacement is the shortest distance between two points which has the magnitude and direction so and it is a vector quantity its unit is meter kilometer and so on so if the uh, it has shortest distance then it will be displacement it's a vector if there is actual length between the two parts that is a distance so what is rotatory motion spinning motion of a body about its axis is called rotatory motion what are the example motion of top and motion of earth about it, uh, its axis this is example of rotatory motion what is meant by 
made by vibratory motion. To and fro motion of a body about its main position is known as vibratory motion. So this is the concept of vibratory motion. Motion of a pendulum swing and seesaw define the vector and give its examples. A physical quantity which can be completely completely described by its uh, magnitude along with its direction. If there is magnitude only, then these are magnitudes and units. Those quantities are scalar quantities. But if the quantities have magnitude, direction, and unit, that those types of the quantities are called vector quantities. Now, what is meant by variable velocity? A body has variable velocity if it covers equal displacement in equal unequal interval of time. If it covers equal, then it is uniform. If it covers unequal interval, then it is variable. So here, here is it is variable velocity. What is uniform acceleration? If a body has uniform acceleration, it has equal changes in velocity in equal interval of time. However, the intervals, short intervals, intervals may be. So, what is meant by positive acceleration? If the velocity of a body is increasing with time, then acceleration is positive. So, define retardation. If the velocity of the body is decreasing with time, then the acceleration is negative. Negative acceleration is also called retardation. It is also called deceleration. Retardation, velocity, and acceleration are in opposite direction. So these are the main points to remember. When it happens, first example, when you are applying brakes, at that time you are you are moving with highest velocity. So you are applying to decrease the velocity. Final velocity will be the less. Initial velocity will be more. You are calculating vf minus vf. So that's why. The numerical value shows that the velocity will be acceleration will be negative while the velocity is increasing, decreasing. So you are calculating Vf minus Vf. What is symbolic method? Symbolic method: a vector is represented with bold letters like this one. Bold letters. It can also be represented by drawing the arrows. These are the arrows drawn on these quantities. When we draw arrows. These are basically symbolic representations to show the representations of some of the physical quantities in their vector form. What is graphical method? A graphical method of vector is represented by a straight line segment with an arrowhead. This is a straight line segment and with an arrowhead A and B. The distance between A and B, gap between the A and B, that is basically magnitude of this vector. And this V vector has an arrow. Already, this arrow shows some direction. Differentiate between rotatory and random motion. Spinning motion of a body about its direction is called rotatory motion. Earth is the example of its motion along its, uh, its axis. The disorder or irregular motion of an object is called random motion. Example of uh, dust, smoke, butterfly. These were number of examples. Where we have studied about an irregular type of the motion. So what we have done, we have differentiated irregular type of motion. And what are the topics we have covered today? We have covered MCQs of the kinematics. Then we have solved, learned to solve some of the problems which were uh, connected with the kinetic uh, kinematics. Then we have discussed some of the we have revised some of the main topics which, which are concerned with the kinematics, differentiated between rotatory and random motion, graphical methods, symbolic representation, and then we have discussed about positive acceleration, retardation, and after retardation, we, we, we move up to uniform acceleration. We, we defined variable velocity, and then we have defined kinematics and uh, motion, uh, defi uh, defined motion, types of motion. What, what are the kinematics and before kinematics we have seen uh, what are the techniques used what, what the main techniques could be used to solve such types of the problems whenever these problems are asked so here it is uh, uh, when brakes sudden brakes are applied final velocity is zero when a body starts from west uh, its initial velocity is zero so there are some techniques to apply you have to decide you have to understand when and where will be the velocity is zero and when the velocity will be maximum 
so it depends on the value of the velocity uh, statement given some of the time the body starts less from that some of the time body moves with uniform velocity and some of the time sudden brakes are applied so sudden brakes final velocity be zero and when a uh, uh, starts from a rest its initial velocity will be zero so with this we uh, our class uh, we will close today's class end of this class i thank you very much for your patience hope you people have understood to solve some of the problems which are which are linked uh, with the kinematics and some of the mcq some of the basic concept which we have already done